This video is to explain assembly and disassembly of the ECD3 delatometer. Part one is about assembly. So first we have to assemble the frit flange. We push the support ring onto the flange. Then insert the glass frit. Put the glass frit on this little helper here. Push the flange over the frit and turn the assembly around. Insert the glass fiber separator, 12 millimeter in diameter, 0.25 millimeter thick about. Then insert the lithium metal counter electrode, gain 12 millimeter diameter, 0.2 millimeter thick. And then we have to assemble the central piston comprised of five parts. This is the upper part of the piston, which has a notch. And this notch needs to be aligned with a set screw in the counterpart. It's a little bit hard to see here. The two ceiling rings are curved and they have to be placed in such a way that the curvature is pointing up. First the polyethylene seal, then the PTFE seal with the same orientation. And then attach the lower part of the piston with a set screw inserted. Again, make sure that the set screw is aligned with a notch in the upper part. By turning, make sure the two parts are properly in position. And then only gently at this point in time, tighten the screw. And then insert the piston into the frit flange. You have to apply significant force in order to bring the piston down. We recommend to press with this helping tool onto the piston. Make sure that the seals are no longer seen so that the piston is really down. And only then tighten the center screw. Use this seven millimeter wrench in order to prevent that the piston is turning while you tighten the screw. You have to apply again significant force here in order to tighten the piston against the frit flange. We screw together the base of the dilatometer. The O-rings are already in place and so is the, the valve here at the side of the base, which is, by the way, not used for this um, kind of setup we are describing here. Put the two parts together. Watch this orientation. The flat parts must be together and then screw together. Turn the assembly around, insert the frit flange with the piston and glass frit and all the other components already inserted. Watch this groove in both the frit flange and the base, which must be aligned together.
Then we assemble the reference pin. We push this PTFE ferrule onto the pin. And while we do this, we press onto this button on the other end of the reference pin. This is to make sure that the ferrule is really here in the up, in the uppermost position. And then pick up lithium metal. Put the lithium metal on a polyethylene foil or similar plastic foil. Press the reference pin onto the foil. Um, while doing so, you have to press on the on the button of the reference assembly to prevent that the PTFE ferrule is getting in contact uh, with lithium metal, which has to be prevented. Once the reference pin is filled with lithium, insert into the cell base into the side opening and only gently tighten at this point in time. We will later on tighten the reference. Then add electrolyte about 350 microliters of electrolyte. Typically you must see the electrolyte on top of the frit. Then insert the working electrode with the active layer pointing down. Put the spacer disc on top. Bring the spacer disc in the center position. We have already inserted here the PTFE seal for the metal membrane, which was not shown in the video. Now we place the metal foil on top. Always use a fresh one. Dispose after use. Make sure that it is perfectly flat, not bent, and that there is no indent from a previous experiment. Then attach the cover flange and tighten the screws. The PTFE seal used to seal the metal foil is uh, significantly thicker than with the previous version of the dilatometer and so you have to apply significant force here in order to compress and tighten the cell. Make sure that this gap here between cover flange and base is completely closed. Then firmly tighten the reference electrode and screw in the spring load from below. Attach the cell to the cell stand. Also at this point in time you can remove the cell from the glove box and continue work outside the glove box. We now attach the sensor unit. First make sure that the sensor stage is in the utmost position. Release the stage and bring it up by turning the micrometer screw and then attach on the base. Watch the alignment here in front. And then tighten the screws. Before starting the measurement, of course, you have to bring down the 
the sensor, so that the tip is seated on the metal membrane. Okay, and done. Now part two is about disassembly of the dilatometer after use. So we bring the sensor stage up and remove the sensor unit from the base. Detach the cell from the cell stand. Unscrew spring load. And also unscrew the reference pin. You can put the reference pin into a small beaker with water in order to remove the lithium metal, get it out of the bore on top of the reference pin. Remove the cover flange from the cell. And dispose the metal membrane, the metal foil. Remove the spacer disc, which can be reused after cleaning and drying. Dispose the working electrode. Then push from below the assembly Frit flange out of the base, dispose the PTFE seal, and now this is an important step. We remove the piston. We need first, we first need to release the center screw. Use a seven millimeter wrench to prevent turning of the piston and uh, lose loosen the screw, but. Don't completely disassemble the piston. The piston sticks firmly in the flange, so we have this little tool here for removal of the piston. We first screw the two parts of the tool together. Slightly release and then insert the flange within the piston from below. Push this disc over the screw and then unscrew the assembly. In this way, pull out the piston from the flange. And only now further disassemble the piston. The two seals are disposed. You have to use new seals for each experiment. And the two metal parts are cleaned and dried and reused. Okay, and done.